Let's go. apartment that is that is ours in Paris which is so exciting and as promised as I've been promising you through this this whole thing I wanted to make a vlog about the process of finding a rented apartment in Paris because let me tell you it has been the fight of my life I, yeah, you know, so many people said how hard it was and I didn't really take anyone seriously because I know that when I really want something, I will go hell, hell for leather, like whatever it takes, I will make it happen. And that was definitely ignited in me. But, oh my gosh, it was so hard. I think, like I must have applied for about 200 apartments I went to visit 18 and then I found this one which I will do a full tour of in in another vlog but for now I want to show you a few of the apartments that I went to visit and just talk about the process of actually finding a place and share any tips as well for anyone who maybe is in a similar situation so I didn't even know what to Google. That's how fish out of water I actually, I actually felt with this. I had no idea where to look. I had no idea what was required to apply for an apartment. It has been a very steep learning process. It's really different in France, the rental market, than it is in the UK where landlords have a lot of rights in the UK and here I'm not a French law expert but it seems to be that the rights are very flipped so tenants have a lot of rights like it's very hard to get someone out of an apartment once they're in and that is the reason it's so hard because landlords are so protective about who they actually let into an apartment what you have to put together is insane it's it's called a, a dossier which is a, a file and knowing that i was always going to be on the back foot because i don't have a job in in france and those candidates are always preferred like they they prefer people who have what's called cdi which is like a, a permanent contract and if you're a couple with that like you just yeah you do it's just so much easier um single self-employed creative from the UK, yeah, like pretty much bottom, bottom of the pile. So I knew that I had to go all out with this, this file, this dossier, and I absolutely did that. Like I went full L Woods with it. I branded my, <laughs> I branded my dossier with like fonts and colors so that it stood out and I treated it like a job application. It, mine was a 40 page, document and you have to have your resume in there, your visa in there, recommendation letters, proof that you have an address in France. Um, I'll do I'll do a full list of everything that was in mind to make it to make it stand out because that's what I wanted to do. And I wanted to stand out for being myself because I can't, you know, I can't pretend to be to be something that I'm not. So I got all of that together. I've got a few links that if you are in this situation and you want to see like what is what is required for that, I will leave I will leave links to those. You also need a guarantor unless again, you know, you have um, the, the permanent contract thing. So I mean it's just taken a village. It's taken an absolute village to help me get this apartment. My friend who has French residency very, very kindly offered to be my French guarantor, so I had that 
If you don't have that, you can use a website called Garant Me, which I know I know a lot of people use. Um, and then they want all the information for the guarantor as well. You know, pay slips, um, proof of address, proof of oh my gosh, just proof. They just want everything. It's like they love paperwork in France. I can't. I, I yeah. I I hate paperwork. I hate admin. It's not my vibe at all. I just. Um, it, yeah, it's been a completely, yeah, just a massive, massive learning curve for me. Um, the other things that you have to provide are things like income. So I had to provide income from the UK and pass tax certificates, um, a letter from my accountant. Oh my gosh, I'll leave a full list of everything that was required. But yeah, it's, um, it's, taken, it's taken a village and I'm just so, so grateful. But mostly because of the reasons that I've just said, like the answer was no. Whereas in the UK, I, I found it very easy to rent. Um, and the other difference here in France is that you, if you go into a furnished apartment, you only have to give one month's notice. Whereas in the UK, you sign a six month agreement or a 12 month agreement and you can, you know, you have to stay. For that whole that whole duration that's not the case here if you go into an unfurnished apartment you have to give three months notice i was very clear about what i wanted i wanted an unfurnished apartment my mom thought i was absolutely insane she was like jess why do you want an unfurnished apartment you don't have anything anything over there like where you're going to sleep what you're going to do it's just you know it's too much too soon um, but yeah, I did want an unfurnished one. I looked at both. I've ended up with a furnished one. Um, and that's probably for the best. So I was probably trying to buy off a little bit more, a little bit more than I can chew. Um, but yeah, I'll get into the ones that I, I'm not going to show you all of them that I went to see, but I'm like picked out a few of them just so that you can see what, what it was like. Okay. So this first one, I did not like, I did not apply for, but it was a real coming face to face with reality because the other problem with renting in Paris is that there are a lot more people wanting to rent than there are properties available. And I mean, like the disparity is massive. This apartment that I got, I know a hundred, a hundred people applied for. Uh, they only did three visits out of the hundred, but it's it's dealt with differently. It's just it's just absolutely crazy, and it got to the point where it just felt like it felt like a full time job. It felt like all I was doing was just running around all over all over Paris looking at apartments. This one was one of the first ones that that I went to look at. It was a tiny studio in the fifth arrondissement, which is where near where I was living. It looked so pretty. It reminded me of my cottage back home, but in, in Paris, in the photos. So I was really, really excited to see it. I got a visit quite easily. And yeah, I turned up and there was literally a queue out of the door, up the stairs to the apartment. And then it was, it was just like a cattle market. You could barely even see the apartment. I didn't like it. The light wasn't very good. It was really, really dirty. It was a furnished place as well. And also with that many people, it, it felt like there wasn't, there just wasn't even, even really any point. But from the photos, I thought it was so, so pretty. And I was, um, yeah, I was really disappointed with that one. And it was a really good price as well. I think that one was 850 euros a month. And in France, that includes charges. So where you'd have like council tax and water rates in the UK, you don't have that here, it's included. Um, the only thing that you usually pay on top is electric and Wi-Fi. Um, but I didn't even, I didn't even go for it, but I felt like, it felt like one worth showing you. This one I absolutely fell in love with and I had this really strong feeling that I was gonna get it. I think I went to see it on a new moon and I have been, I have been wishing on every new moon recently for the apartment of my dreams. I have been trying to manifest it as hard as possible. 
So I went to see this one. I fell absolutely head over heels in love with it. It was in the 18th R&D Smung. I got there early and the guy was like, oh, the previous person hasn't shown up. I was like, yes. Uh, and it felt like a really nice private viewing. There wasn't, there wasn't a queue of people going up the stairs. So that was really good. I think this one was 950 euros a month. It was a beautiful studio. It was so light. It had two massive windows. Um, the bathroom was separate. It felt really spacious. I really loved the area. It was really close, literally like right next to Montmartre, which is such a pretty, pretty area to live. Um, there was a lovely cafe outside where I could see myself working from. It was very like Amelie, um, yeah, very fantasy, fantasy Paris. And I applied for that one, but I, I didn't, you know, I didn't hear anything back. I have never been ghosted as much as I have whilst looking for an apartment in Paris. It is the most mental thing. Like you just you just won't hear, won't hear back. And it moves so fast as well. So if you haven't heard within like a day, two days, you can guarantee that, that you didn't get it. Some apartments that I called about were gone within hours. This vlog is very kindly sponsored by Lingoda, who, as you know, I have been having French lessons with. They are an online language class provider and they have helped me so much in my search for an apartment in Paris. I, oh, I've had to be confident and I've had to speak French to get myself an apartment and that was so, so daunting in the beginning because, you know, it's one thing to be swanning around Paris, like practicing your French in a cafe or a restaurant or a shop and, you know, where there's nothing really invested and it's all just fun and silly and, you know, there's nothing really, nothing really at stake. And then all of a sudden when I realise, oh my gosh, I'm going to have to phone estate agencies and speak French and I'm going to have to write to landlords in French, in texts and emails. It was, yeah, it was really, really daunting because it felt official and I had so much at stake and I wanted to, you know, represent myself really, really well. The classes that I've been having with Lingoda have helped me so much. I love that you can book your classes in advance, you can schedule them. So I tend to do two to three a week and I find that's like a really nice sustainable pace. They do have a one-time offer at the minute which is a 30-day sprint where you do a class for every day and if you do that at the end you get 50% cash back if you want to partake it's running until the end of this month you can use the code jessica sprint and i will leave a link to that and the code in the description for this for this vlog but yes, they, the classes that I've been doing with them, like the teachers are so nice. It's nice to, to learn with other people. And I found what I've learned to be very practical, especially in my search for an apartment. Like, j'ai vu votre appartement. I, it just rolls off the tongue now. I've seen your apartment. Please can I come and visit? It's, it just helped me so, so much. And what I realized was that it wasn't about my French being perfect people don't they don't really care about life like they like to correct you but that's that's okay i want to be corrected because i want to i want to get it right but they really really appreciated me trying and i felt that and i felt like people went out of their way to help me for those efforts but i definitely have Lingoda to, to thank for that. They don't just do French classes, they do all different languages. So if learning a language is something that you're interested in, maybe living abroad for a little bit, or just something that you wanna, you wanna do, or I actually think it would make a really great gift for someone as well, I can't recommend Lingoda enough. Like I said, I didn't even know what to Google, like I didn't even know where to look for an apartment. The best ones that I found, that I will share with you, there was Le Bon Coin, which is like, I don't know, I've never experienced Craigslist in, in America, but apparently it's kind of like 
kind of like that. It's like it's direct between you and the landlord. That is actually how I found this one. So there's no agency involved. Say Loger, I found really, really good. There's an app for that one too. And also, what was the other really good one? Um, PAP. But I struggled with them because they wanted so many specific documents uploading and because I'm expat and I don't fit the classic French format, I found that quite, I found that quite tricky to fit into their admin, admin stream. Uh, the Jinka app as well was amazing. That's kind of like our right move in the UK and it has all the listings posted on there. There is a little bit of a delay. As I said, you have to act very, very fast in France. You have to call, you have to message straight away as soon as it comes on. Um, but that one was really good because it, it shows all the listings. So, it, you know, my phone was just pinging constantly and I was on the phone constantly. As I said, it, it just, oh my gosh, it turned into, into a full-time job. It was a real emotional roller coaster as well. Like I felt so disheartened. I felt like maybe I'm not supposed to be here anymore because I kept getting so many no's and they, you know, there was literally like two weeks to go in the end before I either went back to the UK, got an Airbnb or begged a friend to, to come, and, come and let Hope and, I, Hope and I stay. And it was really hard to keep morale up, but Hope, um, yeah, she, was, she, she really, really helped me. Like every morning I'd say to her, Hope, I'm gonna find us an apartment today. I promise, like I'm not gonna let you down. I'm gonna make this work for us. And then every night it was like, oh, I didn't do it today. I'm so sorry, Hope, I've let us down. It was, it was such a, it was such a crazy, crazy ride. Um, but yeah, I think it's, it's just a case of, um, of sticking it out. And people weren't always that helpful, actually. A lot of people would, you know, say things like, oh, you're self-employed, forget it. Like, you're just not gonna find a place or you're dead, you're dead. It's not gonna happen for you. It's just not gonna happen. And I was like, this is not, this is not helping. I need positivity, please. Um, but yeah, I found it. I managed to, I managed to find it. I managed to, to keep going with it. And I'm so, so glad that we did because someone said yes in the end. So if you are in that situation, just to say, don't give up, do your best, stick with it and keep going. This little studio I fell in love with for the windows. Like I, I have this with thing with windows. I was very clear about what I wanted. I wanted ideally like an old Paris feeling apartment with the big French windows, white floors, wood walls, character, all, all that kind of stuff is very much my vibe. Um, and this, yeah, this had that. It was dark in, it was dark in parts because it only had a window on one side, but yeah, that, but it's like a triple, um, triple panel window and it was so, so beautiful. The kitchen was the tiniest thing I'd ever seen, but I felt like I could, I could make it my own. There were only, I think like four other people at the viewing. It's, it was so funny like when, when you see other people at the viewing because you can see everyone kind of sizing each other up like, oh, I wonder if they've got a permanent contract. I wouldn't. <laughs> and the worst thing that can possibly happen is a, a couple, a French couple turn up, like just, just forget it, just go home, there's no point. Um, but this one, this one felt, this one felt okay, but I never, I never heard anything back. It's one that I applied for and would have happily accepted. It was in the 17th arrondissement, which is an area that I really liked. I would have loved to have lived, but another no. This one I want to show you because it was, yeah, it, it, there was so much I loved about it. It's like perfect location, different apartment. It was behind this big, beautiful, Parisian door and you walked through a courtyard and up this lovely staircase to get to it and then I walked in and like I think I think landlords lie about the size of the place I was really clear that I wanted I wanted something around 20 square meters and it just didn't feel that way but I don't know if they were counting the bunk bed that was in there and yeah, I, I mean the view from the window was so beautiful. It was clean. It was it was nicely put together, but the, the bunk bed was just uh, 
was just an absolute an absolute no no. It, it's so bizarre the things that you see in apartments because some of them are really really tiny. Like the smallest that they can rent to you is nine square meters. So you're talking really really proper tiny houses. Um, I've seen I've seen like kitchens in toilets. The just the weirdest thing. I'm, I'm not used to it all in the UK. This, the, the bunk bed thing seemed to be quite popular, um, but it, it just, just wasn't for me. But in terms of area and, you know, curb appeal and view from the window, it was, it was beautiful. Uh, but I didn't, I didn't apply for this one. It just it didn't, didn't feel like me and it didn't feel big enough either. This one was in one of my ideal, one of my favorite areas. It was in the 16th. Aaron Beastmont, which I really, really love. And I really thought I was gonna get this one. I went to visit, I got on really well with the current tenant that was there. I was chatting with the landlord, we seemed to get on really well. She said that she loved that I was a writer, she really liked the idea of having a creative in there. So I was like, yes, this is yeah, this is great, this is gonna be a goer. Um, it was again behind the most beautiful, massive Parisian doorway. You walked into this beautiful courtyard and it was above the garages. And it was it was a little bit dark, it was a little bit small, but I loved it. It had a really nice, happy energy to it. It was very expensive for the, the size and the price. I think it was 1,160 euros. So it felt, you know, it felt over. Um, but the window was so beautiful. I would have had access to the roof So I got this whole fantasy about laying on a blanket looking up at the stars under the tree and all that kind of stuff The the tree outside was so so beautiful and I just loved the way that the the tenant who was living there had had styled it I went for that one. I, I'm pretty sure I got to the final two because she talked about meeting with me And I got really really excited. I was like yes, this is it. This is it. This is it and then she messaged and said that she decided to give it to someone else, someone who worked, worked closer to the, uh, to the apartment. So it was, it was a no, but you know, good luck, good luck with my search. So that was it. On to, on to the next. This one I really, really loved. I'd say this was my ideal in terms of size. Like it had a lovely, big bedroom, it was in a, a beautiful building, lovely staircase, staircase matters, I think. Um, it was a really great size, I think it was like 30, 35 square meters, so it was a proper one bedroom apartment. It had lovely light, lovely floors, and there was a lot of stuff in there, but from what I remember, it was going to be unfurnished, so everything was gonna be moved out. Um, it was in the 12th Arundhati month, which is an area that I wasn't I wasn't that keen on. In the beginning, I was so clear about where I wanted to live. I was like, no, this, 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 and this, and that's it. And then by the end, it was like, okay, just just show me, <laughs> show me everything. Let's um, let's see what what I can get. As long as it was a safe area, I ended up being completely, completely open in the end. Uh, but yeah, this, this one I, I really, really liked and I could I could see myself living there. It was near to the Bois de Vincennes, which is a massive park which Hope would have, would have loved. Uh, there were lots of people that went to visit that one, but they actually did get back to me, which was nice of them. And they said that while my file was a good one, uh, the landlord decided to go to go for, for someone else. But I would have happily taken taken that one. I think I could have I could have made that one really, really nice. And those are the pick of the picks of the bunch that I went to see. I think I saw 18 apartments in the end. I tried to video like as, as many of them as possible, but that just to give, that gives you a good idea of the kinds of things that that I was looking and looking at. The great thing about the French Parisian rental um, market is that it moves so fast. So when you're in it, it's crazy, it's exhausting. But when you get your apartment, you will be in it within within a week. I was in this one within three days. Totally different to the UK, but I think it's because all the all the legwork, all the groundwork is done is done in the um, in the beginning. 
but hopefully you found that interesting and you've enjoyed having a little nosy. I will give you a full tour of this apartment that I did apply for and I did get and yeah, where, where I'm now gonna be living and I'm really, really excited to explore like rental interior decoration with not nowhere near to the same level that I did that I did with um with the cottage but yeah I've got I just it just feels so nice to have a place it feels like creativity is coming back I've got my own space I feel secure again I'm not worried about not having a, a home to live in which was just driving me completely nuts so apologies for being a little bit quiet that has been why but yeah, um, got there, got there in the end and there's going to be a lot, lot more to show you. I've got quite a lot of um, capsule wardrobe updates for you as well. I've got loads of videos that I'm wanting, that I'm wanting to make. So yes, very, very excited. But hopefully you've enjoyed that one. Big thank you to Lingoda for sponsoring. I will leave that link and the discount code. It is a 20 euro discount code. Um, if you want to join in with the with the sprint, the one time offer that they have at the minute. But thank you so much for watching and I hope that you're okay. If you are in an apartment search, a house search, Parisian apartment search, <laughs> let me know um, in in the comments if you you know you resonate with things things that I've said, how it, how it feels but yeah like I said if it is something that you're struggling with at the minute just keep going and you will 100% get there in the end.